welcome. My name's Tracy Cook and this is the podcast series Victim to Victory. This series gives a voice to those that have overcome obstacles in all forms that dare greatly to share their real stories. Amazing humans like our upcoming guest that have seen hope and risen above those adversities to become victorious and the visionaries of tomorrow that now go on and support, empower and inspire others to do the same. So please subscribe, comment and share. You're in for an absolute treat today, a powerhouse, a superwoman. We have my friend Claire Williamson joining us today. Hi, Claire. Hey, Tracy. How are you? fantastic now that I'm talking to you. (laughs) Now, let me share a little bit about Claire before we get into her story, because it is so powerful and impactful. She's literally changing and saving lives. She is a quantum wealth mentor and soul goal coach, two amazing job titles. And Claire, where does your story start? Tracy, my story starts in 2017 on my hands and knees in a food bank, watching my children tear into a box of cereal because they were so hungry. And I had one of those life changing moments where, you know, when everything in your body just screams, I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm not going to be this person anymore. I'm not going to live in this situation anymore and I have no idea how I'm going to change it. But just in that intention, in that commitment, there was this profound shift. And over the last five years, I have grown a multi six figure company. I have got so aligned to my own soul goal, specifically in the last eight months, eight, nine months. Um, my business looks very different to what it was a year ago, actually, for that reason. Um, And I'm really committed now to help other women like me. Like you say, they have adversity, they have a story. And that story can either hold you back, or it can be the reason that you go on to make a difference in other people's lives and completely change your own life as well. So yeah, that is why I'm here, why I am sharing what I do. And why I'm really pushing a strong message message at the moment too that I hope we can get into a little bit on this chat, this call. Most definitely. Now, there are definitely movements worth f- furthering and your movement of um, finding connection to your soul goal is obviously your driver and that is what is attracting such culture and community and almost like a magnet to you because there's just such an evolution in the power to really stand in our own truth and standing our own belief and it's such an evolution and process to get to that point and I know it hasn't always been like this for you in this level of success Talk to us a little bit more about your journey. Oh, I mean, it was a struggle. Things didn't immediately change after that day in the food bank. It really was this evolution of support and steps and real internal work. I mean, I remember when we did a reality show together and I think seeing watching myself back on that reality show and just seeing just how broken I was really began the the journey into some really deep healing I now know that we cannot have that level of success that we seek until we heal our story until we heal those parts of us that are preventing us from stepping into our truth we won't listen to that truth We'll just listen to the stories and to the programs and we will just play out like a robot, those things that we believe about ourselves and about the world. And the ego does this incredible job of making us completely unaware of it as well, you know? And that's where I was before that reality show. And I, I distinctly remember watching the film, watching the um the show air and looking at myself going, holy crap, like there's some work to be done. And from that day forward, I really stepped into the trauma work really stepping into those places of discomfort and connecting with things in my past that I thought I dealt with, but I hadn't really dealt with. And knowing that when you're running a business, these traumas come through in 
such profound ways things like your communication getting visible sticking to something with consistency or constantly working against ourselves when we have these limiting programs and so I think you know it was really stepping into that trauma work that didn't only help me but also helped me to understand how I help others and that began this epic journey that I've had in the last couple of years working with the subconscious reprogramming and neurosomatic therapy and really understanding how we can break free from ourselves so that we can connect back in and really find out who we are and live from that place of truth. And I mean, trauma does keep us trapped. And until we identify it, we're not going to get success anywhere else. We're really not. And you're a testimony to that of really digging deep into those traumas and those triggers and really working through it. And it is so freaking uncomfortable. And we like (laughs) to keep ourselves safe, especially if we've been through a trauma. We just want to bubble wrap ourselves and just not go there and not think about it and push it down even further and further. And the more we do that, more things evolve, right? Because we're not addressing um, those trigger points and those traumas that are keeping us stuck. They just keep us Mm -hmm. stuck. And you're just such a testimony, Claire. Like I'm absolutely amazed at, um, you know, just going back to the reality show. I remember we were swimming at the beach one day on one of our days off and you said to me, but are you really coachable, Tracy? And those words really stuck in my head. And I I thought I was. I'm like, yeah, of course I am. Boom. (laughs) And, you know, you can see things in people. And this is what I love about you. You can see things in people before they see it in themselves. So you're so in tune and so in alignment with your own soul and your goals and your values and your beliefs that when, and no doubt you bring this into your coaching um, extraordinary as well, because you can see things in people that people can't see in themselves. And Mm. now that you're seeing it in yourself as well, that just opens up such virtual doors to success for you and I'm so happy for you and so happy for the people that you're serving as well now talk to us a little bit about your journey from when you've actually discovered this and you've stepped into your power Claire and you really decided what it is you wanted to do talk to us a little bit about where you're at with that oh Tracy I mean that really has been the journey of the last 12 months there's what was astounding to me was that I thought I'd broken through so much stuff and I built this crazy successful business and I was making this money that I that I wanted and yet on the inside I was feeling misalignment I was feeling like I was working a little bit too hard I was feeling imbalanced with the kids I was feeling a disconnect with the people I was working with it felt like that I was focusing on strategy at the time, helping people on social media share their story. But I was afraid to step away from it all because I was afraid to lose what I had created. And what happened was an event in November last year, which I write about in our book, actually, um, that woke me up. It was a tragic, horrible trauma, (laughs) traumatic event that woke me up to the fact that where I was where wasn't really where I wanted to be. And in that, I had to, I had to get, I had to confront everything. I had to confront things that I hadn't yet confronted. And we have these big traumas going through life, but we also have these little traumas as well that we don't, we don't really bring focus to how profound they are in terms of how they hold us back. And so out of that strategy, I I pulled back completely. I pulled back from actually even proactively making sales in my business. I just dropped into really the work I'd been doing, not the work, but the ritual that I'd started with breath work and movement and music, all these other things. And I found what I'm now calling my miracle frequency, where I became so connected to who I am that suddenly things started to manifest around me, for me, with so much ease and with so much grace. And this illumination on these parts of me that I hadn't healed, they all came right up to the surface and there was no choice but to heal them and to understand how they were this blueprint to take that next step in my business, to actually step out and help people on a a whole new level. Because you actually, right, there is... 
this thing within me where I can't help but see patterns. I can't help but see, you know, a pattern that somebody is playing out from a limiting program. And I think in the past, I've been afraid to allow that gift to use my voice to, um, you know, like we were in that water and I knew you and it was kind of comfortable to, to ask you that question. But in my business, potentially, I wasn't I wasn't taking that risk. Now I know that that risk can absolutely change somebody's life. Like one question, as uncomfortable as it could make me feel to ask it, when I see that limiting pattern that they don't see, when I open that paradigm, that changes everything. That can change everything. And, you know, we go through life and we're in this paradigm and we're looking at it through these set of beliefs. And that means there's only ever one door that we're going out of, out of that paradigm, into the same paradigm, safe actually just means the same, right? It Nothing changes. And if you're like me and you have that soul goal, you have that something burning in your DNA. I know you have this, so you resonate with me. <laughs> and you, you, can't, you can't let it go, right? It's there, con- constantly there, just calling for you to step out, to step more deeply into alignment. But when you have these things that you haven't healed, it's, it's impossible. Mm, oh that's just so powerful and so true and you are a collaborative author in the upcoming victim to victory book as well we have 18 beautiful amazing authors um and claire you're one of them and we know that your chapter uh talk us through a little bit about uh, your chapter and why you decided to write a chapter and any takeaways that our um, audience might get from reading your chapter as well Yeah, I wanted to change people's perspective of victim because I lived as a victim for a really long time. I Now I know looking back, I allowed what I had because, you know, I've always said that Survivor is this badge and we wear this badge because we're proud that we've got through those traumas. And I've always wanted to help people become recovered survivors and thrive. But there was an element that I was kind of missing in that. And that was how that it's a victim consciousness that we have. And it's, it's, it's a, it's a frequency. And that when we elevate in our consciousness and we step out, not only of the victim consciousness, which I did to become that recovered survivor and take personal responsibility and change things, we still do it with an element of fight instead of ease and allowing. And it's this masculine energy, again, that's kept us safe our whole life. And you have to become really vulnerable. You have to allow that feminine power to come through. And that is where we step up in that consciousness into that higher frequency, that higher consciousness. And those things do start to come with more ease. Because we're with more ease, right? We're in that place of attraction that everybody's seeking. Everybody wants law of attraction to work for them. But there is this element of vulnerability. And I wanted to talk to that in the chapter because that was what that tragedy, last, I can't say the word, tragedy, tragedy, (laughs) that's what that gifted me last year was this invitation to become really, really vulnerable and go to those places that I hadn't actually yet taken myself to, to heal. And in that vulnerability, unwrap this beautiful gift of potential. And that is what I want to gift to those people reading the book. So, Claire, that's great that the audience is going to take that away from your chapter and really where you were and how you overcome that. And part of the writing process, did you find that really therapeutic as well? I did because I feel like the lesson was staring me in the face and it wasn't until I started to write that it really revealed itself. And there was just this uh, epic healing of this pain, you know, this pain I'd experienced in what had happened. And I feel like it's allowed me to, to grieve and to heal. And I feel like within that grief, I found this epic feeling of love. And when we look at that highest frequency, it is unconditional love. And I do believe if we can all take ourselves there, 
we can actually heal most of the problems in the world. We've seen how transcendental meditation in cities in India can bring down the crime rates. And I think we don't put enough focus on how powerful this is. You know, what if all the, the charities that we're trying to fund, what if the problems go away just because we start to heal ourselves, just because we start to exist in this, this higher frequency state? And I've become a deep believer in this. And I, I feel like with the book specifically, you know, people will be reading it because they resonate with the title. They will resonate with that idea of, you know, like you said to me, it's either unlocking that prison that you're in and taking that first step or unleashing this epic potential and, and fully stepping into something that you've been avoiding. But there's this essence of ease that can go with that. Mm. You know, it, do, it doesn't it doesn't have to be this hard process when there's forgiveness and when there's love. And I know I sound hippy dippy and so far away from that girl who used to Muay Thai kickbox and, you know, but that all came from not feeling safe. When you can get to that vulnerable place and be in a place where anything could happen and you know that you'll be okay because you believe in you and you've let go of all those limiting beliefs and stories. You know that you can pick yourself up from anything, from anywhere, and always be at the center of that creation of what you've got. Mm. That is the message that I wanted to bring through my chapter is how do you get there? Because I think that's powerful. I think we get stuck in the how in so many ways, and especially when we're you know, growing businesses, trying to make money, we're focusing on strategies. I think the most powerful strategy that, that there is, is when we look inwards, um, look at what we can heal and what where we can expand, where we can let go, where we can allow, you know. And that's what I love about the theme of the book as well is change starts with your story. Because if you are really addressing your story and doing the healing from there, then the possibilities are endless, absolutely endless. And continuing to do that inner work and continuing like everybody that's working with you, Claire, to do that inner work and to really heal from that tragedy or trauma or lived experience or event or circumstance, whatever it may be. It could be the the, the smallest thing of you put up your hand in a classroom once and the teacher shut you down and then you didn't have a voice for the rest of your life. It could be as 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 minute as that. It doesn't have to be a big trauma event. And you're just helping so many people in that space to recognize that that is a thing, that you can heal from that and you do it from the inner work. And once we start healing, man, it feels so good. We feel so free and so authentic. And then we can just blossom from there. And that's what I know that you bring to this book, that you bring to your community and that you bring to your coaching to help others create that quantum wealth and to really reach their soul goals and the elements that you're you're portraying in this through your story and your lived experience and in your chapter of the Victim to Victory book as well, there's only potential left out there for everybody to actually see and seize and take and step into their greatness it is such it is such a blessing to be part of the book and yeah I'm calling it awakened wealth because I woke up I woke up to how I was you know pushing and hustling and how we don't need to do that when we heal those things you know and I've learned so much in the, the last 12 months as well around, you know, how much the body is part of that. I think it was almost like what I experienced and being thrown so deep into such a traumatic event was almost like me becoming an experiment again to remember all of these ways that are involved in healing ourselves. It's not just a mindset thing. It's it's in our body. It's like trapped in the cells of our, the memory of our cells and such a beautiful process to have this mind body spirit approach to healing um which is the work that i've stepped into fully now that tra that transformational stuff 
it's really leaving a legacy of breaking those generational chains that is passed down through our DNA, through trauma and experiences and breaking those chains for the next generation. That is an absolute legacy. And I know you're passing that down to your three girls as well. Claire, what kind of message would you like to leave the audience on today? I would like to say that I believe that we can have it all and it can be easy. And I feel like those things, though, it's like when we're told as a kid to stop daydreaming, you know. it's it's It takes away these superpowers that are just inherent to who we are, things like daydreaming, things like just believing that we don't have to work hard to have what we want, not when we reclaim that creative power, not when we let go of those limiting stories, not when we step out of all those things that we were taught growing up, going through schools, you know, this this matrix of um, never being good enough, actually. When you reconnect with how good you are and, and how perfect you are and all of these eccentricities and beautiful ways that you are just uniquely you and you learn how to be creative and have a radical expression of them, whether it's through a business and your relationship, whatever, you know, it's just this powerful way of manifesting everything that you want. It is very powerful indeed. Claire, thank you very much for your time today. And thank you for being brave to share your story as well, because I know that each time we kind of admit one of our vulnerabilities, it's helping somebody else, but it's also healing us as well. So thank you very much for sharing that. You're so appreciated in the Victim to Victory community. She is the visionary of tomorrow, leading movements worth furthering, Claire Williamson. We will be sharing where to connect with her do your soul a favour and and connect with Claire as well. And you can find the Victim to Victory podcast on Apple, Spotify and YouTube. And if you got value from today, which I know you did because Claire's amazing, please subscribe and comment. And don't forget, you can access our Launch Brand and Market podcast course in the show notes as well. And let me leave you with a, with a, with a comment as well of wear your story like a superhero cape and not an anchor. Thanks, Claire. Thanks, Trace. See you on the next episode.